before you go and buy an iPad for software development, you should definitely watch this video. A while back, I bought an iPad Pro, and in this video, I'll show you how I use it on a day-to-day -day basis as a front-end software developer. And a question I get asked all the time is if you should get an iPad instead of a laptop as a computer science student, or if you're just trying to learn how to code. So let's talk about that too. You've probably noticed that YouTube and other websites or apps look different on a laptop than they do on an iPad or phone. This is intentional to make a site that is easy to use. It's something you have to consider and implement when building the application. It just doesn't happen on its own. Applications need to respond correctly to different sizes of screens, which is why we call it responsive design. In Chrome DevTools, you can simulate different screen sizes, which helps to make development faster and easier, but it's not perfect and you still have to deal with differences across browsers. If you're working on a project that requires a responsive design, having iPads and phones for testing is helpful. I mean, this is probably the number one reason why an iPad is helpful as a web developer. But back when I worked on hybrid applications, it was mandatory because to build hybrid apps, you use a JavaScript framework to build a single application that can be deployed to both Android and iOS devices. It's not a perfect replacement for native applications, but these types of apps can be useful. These are actual applications, so they have to be installed on the device, which meant that I ended up having to have several different devices from different manufacturers with different screen sizes just for testing. But when it comes to testing personal projects, you're probably gonna be fine with just your phone and a laptop, unless you're actually targeting iPad users, then you're probably gonna be fine to get by with just a single iPad. A lot of times as a front-end developer, I end up having to sketch out or wireframe application pages or components, and most times I end up just using a notebook for this. But if I do plan to share it, then I'll end up using an iPad. It's also helpful when doing some design work or for creating SVGs, but honestly, this isn't something that I'm doing all the time. Time, and so it's not an absolute necessity. I mean, I created the logo for this channel myself, but at work there are dedicated designers who end up making company approved SVG icons as well as high fidelity mockups. It's also nice to be able to mark up documents on an iPad using the Apple Pencil instead of a mouse because it just looks a lot more natural and you're able to easily pass them back and forth between the iPad and a MacBook Pro. I'm also in somewhat of a unique situation because I make these videos. And so when I'm trying out different coding apps on my iPad, I'll use the screen recording feature to capture what I'm doing so that I can then airdrop it into my MacBook for video editing. Some people like to take notes on their iPads and I thought I'd be more efficient that way, but turns out I was wrong. I took my iPad to several JavaScript conferences and never even pulled it out. I'm just a no good, dirty, tree wasting paper kind of guy. Or I will use my laptop to take notes when I could do that and put it directly into tickets. The main text related task that I do on my iPad is through the Notion app. I use Notion to manage video ideas from my phone and then I'll write outlines for these videos and they sync across all my devices so then I can just pull them up on my iPad and use those notes when I'm making these videos. But what about code? Is it okay to get an iPad for coding instead of a laptop? You could do that for some languages and projects only because there are some that just won't work well on an iPad. But there are plenty of applications if you're learning the code that are geared towards new programmers to help you learn the different concepts. And I'll be doing a video on some of those soon. So subscribe if you want to find out when that comes out. For actual coding, I just don't think it's worth it to get an iPad. If you have other reasons to get an iPad, then that's great. You might consider getting a cheaper laptop and a mid-tier iPad if you're on a budget but I definitely wouldn't recommend going down the solo iPad route for coding. When it comes to actually writing code on an iPad, I only do that when I'm experimenting or trying out a new application. I don't use an iPad for any kind of serious software development outside of testing, period. And there are a lot of reasons why, and I already went into that in a previous video, so you can watch that one next. Or if you really want to code on an iPad, I already have a video on the best way to do that too. And I'll leave the links in the description because if you're on a phone, the responsive design may be hiding those features from you. Lates.